What's up guys, this is Cher talking, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'll be making a full review for the Romancing Festival Mirza Manor that brings Mirza as a damage dealer that can improve Sun Squads, he can heal and buff via Sun Attacks. Dark is a piercing shadow damage dealer that can decrease the defense of the enemy and Minstrel is a blunt leader that can buff break, debuff and apply attack and defense boosts. Let's start talking about Mirza, he gives a name to the banner, but it's not the best one, in my opinion. We have 130% STR, that's not the highest, we already saw 145. He's a strong damage dealer, but not really a nuker. 112% endurance and 108% will, and 97% agility. Nothing here really stands out compared to recent releases. He starts the fight with 14 MP to his best skill, and he nullifies shadow damage for the whole fight. If a skill has, for example, slash and shadow, he's gonna negate. Then he casts Silver Armor's Brilliance to himself. When landing on Sun Attack, he's gonna recover 1 BP, apply a defense boost that decreases damage taken by 20% for 2 turns and stacks, and buffs all surviving allies status by 5%. Something to matter here, it doesn't have a limit. You can keep using this trigger if you have multiple attacks. But okay, that's just to himself, right? He can cast this to everyone via skill number 2. Silver Light Slash is a 6 BPB power attack with Slash and Sun. That before attacking, will cast Silver Armor Brilliance to everyone in the squad, including Mirza. So he actually has double the effects. He will also grant himself end of turn OG Gorge by 35 points. And then he also has another one already. He gets 70 points of OG Gorge every turn. If you are using the over accelerate formation, he would then have 85 points, meaning that if he gets hit twice in a fight, he already reaches overdrive every turn. Or if you are bringing other characters like Aldora, like uh, Shirei, like Darius, and many others, it will be easy to get into overdrive. He actually really wants to do that. But now we need to discuss double the effects of Silver Armor Brilliance, meaning that he will stack a lot of defense boosts, right? But let's talk about his chase attacks. When landing an attack, he's gonna chase with skill number 3. That is a single target slash and sun attack that hits 5 times with the power. And each hit has a 10% chance to buff each of the status of the game by 25% as a command or as 15% as a chase. So, well, if you use this skill and then you chase, you're gonna have. 10 times chances to buff status. Some will be 25%, others will be 15%. It's not a guarantee. And that's very similar to Julian in his counter style. He had that skill called Stary Rush that did the same. But with the difference that Julian buffs himself only, Mirza is buffing everyone. Now, remember that he already has his chase attack and he has silver armor brilliance. Meaning that you will be buffing everyone's status at least by 20%. Because it's then 10% because of two stacks and your chase will buff 20 total. If he attacks on overdrive, he then chases again with Silver Light Dance. That is an AoE attack with C Power Slash and Sun that will recover all surviving allies HP by around 1.8 thousand or more. Okay, so he is a strong healer, as he was in the past. He can heal every turn if you get into every overdrive. Now, uh, on overdrive, he'll be buffing all status by 30% at least. And if your other characters are using sun attacks as well, they will benefit so much from silver armor brilliance. Okay, let's talk about characters that have multiple... Chase attacks. Okay, the best one here will be Goddess. Why Goddess? <laughs> because you can stack multiple chases with Goddess and then charge and unleash. She will then trigger the effects every new laser. If you have her Arsenal Ball from the Summer Style, Arsenal Ball will then attack with Blunt and Sun. That helps as well because. You keep triggering status buff in Goddess who have many defense boosts and not suffer from BP generation because she does have problems. Minstrel is another character that has sun attacks and he will also benefit from extra BP, although he does not really need. And then we will have other characters like Creator that really does not need much uh, BP 
but getting more defense boosts will help as well and he will allow everyone to also get extra status creator can attack up to three times so that means up to 15 percent status buff in many fights now multiple bosses are buff breaking us every turn or every two turns so there is this little problem blue will be a good one to use as well but blue is a counter there is also Sirius if you want and actually many others in the end this is a very good type of effect that requires you to have multiple characters using sun attacks the other leader that we had in the past for sun was final impress and she also buffs sun damage by 50 percent for everyone and allow you to get three points of bp only once and apply a defense boost to everyone this defense boost will decrease damage taken by 10 percent and will stack if you have final impress bringing mirza together will be very good now uh, let's talk about other stuff. Mirza also improves sun damage for everyone via Elemental Hands Sun. 20% per turn, up to 100% on turn 5, and attack boost of 15%. So we have here actually 115% damage improval for Mirza and everyone that uses sun, or just 15% for those that don't. He also has Intrinsic Sword 5 that will improve his damage potential by 30% at all times. He will reduce damage taken from resistant attacks by 40% and has a 37% chance to evade resistant attacks. Now for other skills. There is Silver Sword Double Strike. That is a skill that attacks twice with Silver Sword Plus. He power and it gives him a sun attack boost of medium effect. The sun attack boost is a 35% damage increase and in this case of Silver Sword Double Strike, you will be buffing all status for everyone by 30% on normal turns and 40% on overdrive. It is something to use if you don't have enough VP. But Mirza will get a lot of VP because, look, he gets 3 by every turn, gets 2 by attacking, 2 via chase, and then another 2 if he's on overdrive. That means he gets easily 6 and actually 9 by accounting for the end of turn. So... He doesn't really need all much help from external sources, but it still helps him having enough VP to keep using Silver Sun Fang because this will do much more damage. Now, uh, we need to discuss the utility of a full Sun Squad. Mirza can buff around 30% status for everyone, and other characters, if they have at least one chase, will be buffing 10%. Let's say if you have a full Sun Squad with Mirza, you can buff all status for everyone by around 80%. That's pretty cool. Because remember, that's exactly what you get from using Matchwork. Matchwork, buffer style, will be buffing 40%. And will also uh, buff 30% extra via skill. You buff 20 plus 20 when attacking, and then you have an extra 30 with being of Exaltation. Or extra 40 with Heaven's Heal. But... Matchwork Damage Dealer Style is another one that works well with Nirza because of good defenses and also allowing everyone to get extra buffs via her normal setup. So I think it's not that hard to build a Sun Squad if you have the characters that I mentioned it, but it's still limiting. They are not really the best meta characters all the time. See what I'm saying? But if you can actually build a squad around then, if the enemy is weak to sun, that's gonna work. Mirza is more of a sun specialist than a slash specialist, of course, because slash is plenty now. He's not going to do more damage than any version of Kihachi. He's not gonna do more damage than Yuhan. So, he works if you need extra stuff from your attacker. For example, if Kihachi is not offering you too much, for example, you're not bringing her together with Fornius, that Fornius gives uh, you an attack boost when using cold attacks, then Mirza is allowing you to survive better, but you will do much less damage. Mirza still works well with Creator if you want, because Creator has, for example, Sun Shower. With Sun Shower, from inheritance of his Halloween style, you then apply Sundered, and you can keep using it, and multi hit attacks will do more and more damage. So that works. Also, Creator has a Sun Elemental Leader skill. And that one is the good type. Will give you extra BP, as you can see here. 
healing, attack, and defense boost. The defense boost is the good one because it's 10%. The attack boost is just 5. So they combo well together as well. Now, is Mirza really impactful? I don't think so because uh, he's good at being a uh, jack of all trades, but he's not really the best in anything that he can do. Now, you can do some inheritances, for example, left fork if you just want slash damage. He will do more damage overall than using his skill tree, but it's just slash. He will not trigger his sun effects, but I believe it's just better to use his skill tree. Attacking defense, if you need extra defense boost, you're going to cast a 15% one, and then you can use it twice for two turns. And from his last style, you can inherit Valent Slash Plus if you want to save VP because this is free and it will still trigger the sun mechanics. And Heroic Stance will improve his damage by 30% two times. He doesn't have many damage uh, potential. And it's actually kind of free to use, but you are not attacking. I don't really like that too much. In my opinion, the best inheritance is Silver Light Fangs if you totally need to heal a lot, since this one is a triple S power attack that has a 50% chance to heal again. If you are using on overdrive, for example, you can heal twice. But that's about it. I don't think he needs any inheritance, to be honest. He comes ready to work as he should. But, like I said, he's not really impactful. He's good if you have been building Sun Squads, but is also skippable, in my opinion. We receive a 4 out of 5 in our new grading system. The next one will be Dark. And he has 125 dexterity, that's not really high for a damage dealer. 97% endurance and will. Those values are very bad for current game, but very high agility with 117%. Forget about his intelligence, it's not meant to make any impact, but it's for Remembrance Battle. Moving on, uh, he has low endurance and will because he has very good chances to evade. There is Conceal, that gives him a 50% chance to evade as long as everyone is alive. But he also has Intrinsic Sword 5, that gives him a 30% damage improval, but also a 40% damage reduction when resisting damage, and a 37% chance to evade and resist. So, you have to equip him to resist all enemy attacks in order to have two different chances to evade. He starts the fight with 11 VP to use his best skill, then he also has two different effects on the start of a turn that will be cast on all enemies. Weak point, pierce defense down for one turn. If you land a pierce attack, every hit will grant a pierce defense down that decreases defense by 20% last for two turns and you will stack. So on turn two onwards, damage will be very high. There is also weak marker, pierce, endurance and will. In this case, every Pierce attack will grant uh, Endurance and Will debuff of 5%. That's not high, but it was made in order to help you fight versus Roadblocker. Because Roadblocker needs to be Will debuffed in order to apply ailments like Stun. When you land an attack, you recover 1 BP. And when you attack, you always chase with Blue Spike Plus. That is a Pierce and Shadow attack with a power that when attack lands has a 50% chance to give 2 BP to the party. That's nice because the average will be 1. And it chases yet again with Blood Sucker. That is a deep power attack just slash that recovers HP. Because Dark can take a lot of damage, it's not very good defensively, and recovering will help him stay alive. You also have 50% chance to chase with Blue G Quartet. And that is his skill number 3. It's a single target Pierce and Shadow attack that hits 4 times with E power, costs 11 VP as a command, and each hit will give a Pierce attack boost. That will improve Pierce damage by 25% as command and 20% as chase. So it will scale to do more and more damage, especially because you are decreasing the defense of the enemy via weak point. It will work in all types of enemies, but the skill itself, for what it is, is not that strong. And you don't have a guaranteed chase, it's just 50%. That is his main problem. If this was guaranteed, then he would do much more damage overall to compete with some other damage dealers. And he is also competing with Xeno. Not that Xeno is that good, but he is another one that can decrease defense. But in his case, it's some defense down. So both are S sword users. It is easier to use Dark because, well, all of your S sword users will have Pierce damage. So on Remembrance, he helps much more than Xeno. Okay, uh, at the end of every four turns, he will recover the usage of Gloom Trust. What is Gloom Trust? This is skill number two 
It's a fast single target attack with piercing shadow damage and has power plus 5. Okay. Uh, it will grant yet another weak point, but for just one target. That would then double down on the pierce defense down effects. So every new hit will be doing 20% defense down twice. If you have people like Swift, yeah, remember Swift? It's another uh, sword, uh, S sword user. And he has a uh, skill that attacks multiple times if you charge via Fox Fire. Heaven Line Fox Trails attacks between 4 to 9 times, and you can use it 4 times from Command and 3 Chases. So use that before Swift attacks, and the damage is going to be insane. Back to Dark. He does have uh, attack boost for our allies, 15%, and just like Pierza, 20% Pierce damage improval, 5 times for a total of 100%. So he is somehow um, support for Pierce squads, and reaches 115% improval for all Pierce damage dealers, and just 15% for older ones. Like I said, he has Intrinsic that doesn't really improve his damage by all that much, but it's not that bad either. Skill number one is called Dark Pierce, and hits two times with the power. For 2 BP, it's actually pretty strong, since it will just decrease the defense of the enemy two times. And you have the guaranteed chase that will decrease the enemy two times again, and if you get the Blue G Quartet, it will decrease by another four times. Well, Dark doesn't really need Inheritance. He does have Stamina Back, that is a C power attack that can buff Dax 3 by 30%, but... In all reality, this doesn't really make any difference since the first skill hits twice. You also have access to Fatal Trap, that is an EOE instant kill for the Ziggur Fey fight. And Poison can help you with Carmine. But nothing else really matters. He already has the damage he needs and the cyclings he needs. But it's just that his damage could have been higher if he had a guaranteed chase with Blue Quartet. And it's not. Other characters will have this type of weak point, although weak marker is kind of hair. But it doesn't really matter overall, unless you really want to nuke and you have a squad for that. I would say that Johan, although he's not really a full pierce damage dealer, can be used together. He does have purple shadow strikes that will apply uh, pierce defense down and the attack itself is still pierce. But Johan is much better than Dark overall. In my opinion, he is not someone you should be pursuing. Well, we really help on Remembrance. I managed to beat Megalith Dragon with Dark Ape plus Swift in 4 turns. It was amazing. But you can also wait for other damage dealers. Although, they are pretty hard with the S's word, Weapon. In my opinion, he only deserves a 3.5 out of 5. Still skippable in the long run. The last character is Minstrel. Oh my god. Well, Minstrel is amazing. When you look on the status, it doesn't make all that much sense. He just has 110% STR, Endurance, Agility, Intelligence, and Will. But I really like the Agility being high and Endurance and Will being good enough. His damage is lacking, but we're not looking at that part since he is a debuffer. At the start of a turn, he grants all surviving allies Minstrel Song two times for one turn. When landing a blunt attack, you're going to activate the following effects a max of two times. Buff break the enemy. Yeah, removes all buffs from the enemy just by using a blunt attack. He makes every blunt attacker in your party a buff breaker. You then debuff the target's status by 10%. All status. So, they can debuff anything. And will also grant the target defense down that decreases defense by 20%. But just for that turn. Okay. That's really amazing. Because, look at that. Two times. If you have five blunt attackers in your party, you can debuff the enemy status by 100%. That's right. You're gonna receive zero damage easily. But you need to attack before the enemy. You have to remember that. And all oh, if your characters will be fast or have enough speed to always go before the enemy. But the buff break part is amazing and it's a first. We never saw that before. And makes Minstrel really impactful in the seven heroes in the special fight okay let's move on there's more he then increases elemental blunt damage by 30 percent for all allies reaching 150 you have been seen mirza and dark only increasing by 100 he increases by 150 percent by turn five awards when he attacks his chases with fantasy lullaby 
It's an AoE blunt attack that has a chance to stun, a chance to inflict sleep, and also can debuff the target's will by 15%. Okay, why debuffing will? To help with road blocker. I really wanted them to give him a different chase, but they want to sell the character for multiple purposes, and there are not many club users for Remembrance, and he's gonna make it super easy to fight versus road blocker. The problem with Fantasy Lullaby is that it's just blunt damage, so it will not trigger Mirza passive, for example. But then, when attacking on overdrive, he chases with Eclate Darme. That is an AoE. Blunt and Sun attack that will cast an attack boost that improves damage potential by 15% as a chase. Gonna command is 20%. Last for two turns and stack. But especially a defense boost that decreases damage taken by 25% last for two turns and stack. The attack is pretty weak, it's just E power, but we are looking about the support here. Then he also chases with notes of blasting. That this time is just a slash. It is an AoE attack and recovers all surviving allies HP by around 400, gives 1 BP to everyone as well, and has just B power. Okay, so on overdrive, he chases 3 times. Nice. This is another character that can get into overdrive pretty fast, but depends sometimes on support, because by the end of turn, he gets 45 points of OG Gorge. Now, on the start of a turn, he grants all enemies attack down, that would decrease their damage on the source by 5%, not really stellar, but he also casts a defense boost that decreases damage taken by 15% and stacks. Just for that turn though, he also recovers his own BP by 2, so he's a 5 BP per turn character, at least, or more. Then improves damage by 20%, forget about damage with this guy. But on the start of a turn, he gets a defense up that improves defenses by decreasing damage taken by 15%, 5 times per battle. So, takes time to build, but eventually will be very defensive. Look that there is no other damage reduction passive directly. He really needs some turns to be defensive. Now, skill 1, Healing Light Strike. It's a single target blunt attack that will recover all surviving allies HP by around 400 for free. Okay, that's nice if you don't need to do anything else. Then skill number 2, Milagis Notes. It's a AoE attack, Blunt and Sun, so this will trigger both Minstrel passive, but also Mirza's, or Impress, or Creators. And it's AoE to the buff Dex Routine Intelligence by 30%, but it's not a guarantee, depends on the intelligence. That should be safe in most scenarios. And in this case, if you use this attack with Minstrel, and you have a full blunt squad, you'll be debuffing 30%, and then you're gonna debuff two times. 24 all status with Minstrel alone, while everyone else is against you debuff. So you can reach 130% tax certain intelligence debuff and 100% debuffs for all other status. Then skill tree shining sound is AoE, blunt and sun, deep power, cost is 10, and when attack lands, grants more down large, decreasing 35% of the damage at the source, lasts for two turns, but do not stack. And also guard down large that will decrease the defense of the enemy by 35% and last for two turns. Okay, uh, both offense and defense, but to be honest, the guard down will not matter too much. You get much more from the morality down, but the guard down will stack with all the other defense downs that you apply via Minstrel Song. And the less damage dealing in your party will do more. Okay, so what could you use as inheritance to make Minstrel even better? Eclated Dharma as inheritance. That comes from his first UDX style. Well, because in this case you're gonna apply 20% attack boost and 25% defense boost. And this cycles perfectly with his skill number 3. Because you can keep cycling between those two to have lots of support. Now, besides this, you could also inherit, for example, New Year Melody to revive someone in some specific fights where you don't have a reviver and you need. And you can also inherit Rainbow Slash, because this will be a 3 turns defensive stance versus skill damage, and also buffs endurance. Or Starlight Slash, that would then... Uh, buffs will and apply the defensive stance spell large. 
The problem with those skills is that they are not blunt based. While Eclated Dharma is blunt based. So you will be triggering all of his effects. When you are attacking non overdrive, you will have to use blunt attacks since Fantasy Lullaby is blunt, but you only chase once. So use blunt, follow it blunt, trigger twice. On overdrive, you could theoretically use the other ones that are slash based because you will still be able to trigger two times the effects because of Eclat Dharma. So Minstrel is really, really powerful. I think that he competes mostly with Poe. Because Poe allows everyone to debuff as well. But Poe has to use Steel first to allow everyone to do it. Poe also gives you some defense boost and also the same attack down. So he was very useful. Steel is very useful for Remembrance and other types of content. Especially if you uh, have to use Spears for indirect attacks. And if you do have Poe, you have a little less reason to summon for Minstrel. Or JMU that works similarly as well. But Poe is a little better than JMU, in my opinion. So, they use different weapons as well. You can still have all of them, but that's more for collectors than for people that have to decide if they want a new character or not. I have been skipping many other debuffers, like for example, I don't have Misty. That is, in my opinion, the only other one that is really broken. Because Misty allows you to debuff the enemy, but when the enemy attacks, it's different. Reactionary instead of based on your own actions. She also decreased damage taken by a lot via her skill number 2 and has good damage. There is also Real Queen. Real Queen is better for single target scenarios. You can theoretically use Real Queen together with Minstrel, but you prefer to just use Eclated Army all the time instead because she already has a Morale down. She also applies lots of defense downs. So you are going to improve the damage by a lot. But she'll be more of a damage dealer and defense down inflictor than a debuffer if you're using them together. It is easy to build blunt squads now if you summon it for some characters. For example, Urpina. She is much better than you think. If you have a full random squad, you can bring Urpina in a squad and she will trigger all blunt passives. Another very good character to use with Minstrel will be Gustave. Because Gustave also has blunt damage. So he is going to trigger twice the effect as well. Professor is another one that has blunt damage. Although sometimes she is better off casting her secondary skill. Then in the future, Bonnie and Formina are all about blunt damage as well. In their premium styles. If you like to use Genie. And special Misty, if you don't mind pulling for uh, another debuffer to have them together, they are really broken. Enemy will do damage to you, and if it tries to use the fire weakness mid-turn, Misty will debuff again. So, Minstrel is really broken, one of the best units of recent times, but he requires you to use blunt attackers. <laughs> another one that I was forgetting is Dantark. Dentarg is a really crazy blunt specialist because he's a good damage dealer and he also allows everyone to get 4 points of DP when using blunt. And they will also get to 25 points of OG Gorge and also give 25 points of OG Gorge to a random online. So he's really useful when using it together with Minstrel. Okay, so by the end of the day, Minstrel deserves a 5 out of 5 and is... Really someone you'll be using for a while. Out of the recent styles, many people say that uh, this character won't live too long, but that's not the case with Minstrel. Sadly, this banner does not give you as much value. When we look back to the banner image, I feel like only Minstrel really matters moving forward. So this banner will receive a silver award. Because if you got Misty, you are pretty safe in my opinion. You don't need him, but if you have both, you're gonna have a very strong squad. Minstrel may not be enough for those that are saving gems for Saga Emerald Beyond banners, but Mirza is still okay if you get him. 
and Darkin will also help with remembrance. But if you pull on this banner, get Minstrel and get out, unless you're a fan of the other two. I am, I pulled it, got all three, but had to pity. Now I don't have enough gems to pull many Saga Emerald Beal banners, and we'll have to decide. If you are undecided, wait at least till they release the new banners, and you can see which one will give you more value. And if you are lucky with the Saga Emerald Beal banners, you can pull for Minstrel, because he is really amazing. Another reason to pull is because he uses clubs. You will not be getting club units for a while, and having him for all future remembrances will really, really help. But that's just my opinion. What is yours? Please see here in the comment section if you got him or not. And I hope to see you soon in the next video or live stream. Goodbye.